Hey, it's the Empire. Geo Boxing Empire. Boxer Boxing. Nah, man, you guys see the footage, man. Amir King Khan training with Terrence Bud Crawford. Undefeated welterweight world champion, WBO world champion, uh, considered number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Man, this is a really big deal. Now, it's wild because there's been murmurings of a fight with Kara Brook and Amir Khan. And that's one of the biggest fights in the UK. Um, at least uh, for rivalry right now in the UK, bar none, right? There's not a rivalry I can think of as an American that's bigger than that one besides the Anthony Joshua versus Dillian White fight. But Anthony Joshua is on another level because, you know, he's actual, actually a champion. And Dillian White, while he's a great fighter, he's never have been ever a champion before. Therefore, the rivalry is big, but it's not as big as Carol Buckley and Mira Khan because at one point they were both champions and they were both seen as the best at one point in their career, not just uh, in their division, but uh, there's certain caveats to their game that was seen as elite, right? Mira Khan being the fastest fighter in boxing and uh, uh, Carol Brook being extremely fundamentally sound. And at one point, at one point, the best in the sport of boxing. When Carol Brook was fighting Triple G, you know, a lot of people were giving uh, Carol Brook a big chance, right? It, it may be a long shot, but Carol Brook, you know, when he fought Triple G, the, the, the skills he displayed against Triple G, mind boggling, you know? Uh, a lot of people were saying if Carol Brook had two fights at middleweight, he would have won the fight, you know? And if Carol Brook's body would have held up against Triple G, he may have won that fight after all. But all that being said, man, um, Amir Khan actually came out recently and said, you know what, the Kerr Brook fight didn't happen because, you know what, I just didn't want it to happen. I just didn't want to fight the guy. But now it seems that uh, this fight with Kerr Brook and Amir Khan is happening because he's training with uh, mutual opponent Terrence Bud Crawford, right? Kerr Brook and uh, Terrence Crawford fought and Amir Khan and Terrence Crawford fought and Bud stopped both of them. Now, this is a really big deal because, like I said earlier, Terrence Crawford is seen as the pound for pound number one fighter, and is, he's extremely fundamentally sound. Now, if you didn't know, man, um, Terrence Crawford actually has three different trainers, and you see Khan there training with one of them. And the reason why Terrence Crawford is so so advanced as a fighter is because he has three different trainers giving him three different philosophies on how to fight. So that's why he's so advanced. That's why he can go softball and fight softball. And then, and, um, but ultimately, that being said, you know. Um, no one knows Amir Khan's weakness better than uh, the coaches of Terrence Bud Crawford and Terrence Crawford himself. So Amir Khan is training with Terrence Bud Crawford to uh, fill in the holes in his gaps. Fill the holes in the gap, right? To, okay, what do you need to work on? Why are you getting caught, right? And this is a really big deal for Amir King Khan because at this point in Carol Brook and Amir Khan's career, this is a make or break it fight for him. They both had long, tough journeys and they've been to the top and they fell to the bottom. But this is the fight right here that's going to really solidify them uh, as that ne the, the last man standing, really. The last man standing. And they can probably end their career in the UK and maybe have one or two more big one fights in America. You know? Now, Carol Brook, man, he's always been a solid fighter. And what really hurt his career was the Triple G fight. That was the first thing that really, that was the beginning of the end for him. With getting his eye socket broken, uh, I believe was a left hook. So that would be Carol Brook's right eye that got messed up first. And then uh, when he fought uh, uh, Errol the True Spence, he got his other eye socket broke, which would be his left one, right? Now that being said, you know, it was always a real shame that Carol Brook never fought guys like Jesse Vargas. He was rumored to fight that guy, uh, but he never got around to fighting him. Um, you know, Carol Brook just had a underwhelming career at welterweight. Now he had that win with Sean Porter, but as far as coming to America and fighting the, the top guys at the time, because everything is, it's all about time scale, right? And at the time, Robert Guerrero was still a big name. You know, Jose Cito Lopez is still a big name. Um, Soto Carras is still a big name. These are guys that are big names at the time. Kerr Brook could have had a more fulfilling career at, at 147. Right, but Amir King Khan, he had a lot of big fights like Luis Clazo, um, you know, Devin Alexander, uh, Marcus Madonna, and these guys went on to have uh, second, uh, you know, a second renaissance in their career, 
by beating elite level fighters like Marcus Madonna came back and beat Adrian the problem boner he was undefeated and Marcus Madonna ended up fighting Floyd twice Amir Khan dropped Marcus Madonna and beat him convincingly he beat Marcus Madonna more convincingly than Floyd did when he first fought him now it's wild because when you actually watch the Marcus Madonna fight versus Floyd fight it looked like Madonna's landing a lot of punches but if you actually watch um, look it up it's called inside the ring with Floyd Mayweather you can see the punches that Marcus Madonna were throwing and they almost look like they're they look like they're landing but if you actually watch Floyd he's rolling with the punches so they're like literally half inch away from his face but he's rolling with the punches and it, it's something that you couldn't see unless you get closer and you see it in the ring you know Floyd Mayweather is dodging and weaving the punches you know a lot of times in boxing it's the spider things you can't see that that makes it such such an advanced sport but the casual fan really can't see it right you think uh it's funny because a, a commentator see like it would be like a punch landed and then like <laughs> you'll see a guy throwing a punch and a guy will literally be hopping away from the punch and they'll graze him but he really didn't land the punch and then the other commentators would be like yeah i told you you didn't land he's like okay you got me jim you know a lot of things in boxing that are really so fast paced so quick quick twitch that it's hard to see to the naked eye but because the guy would literally fling his face toward the punch away from the punch and it looked like he landed it because it's such a fast rapid motion right but that being said man you know like i said earlier i just named khan's opponents that went on to have a second hurrah in their career now that being said man you know a lot of people would be favoring carol brooke me personally i haven't seen carol brooke really post too much after the terrence, the terrence crawford defeat i still see the mirror Khan training so but just based off of social media and just the staying active as far as keeping in shape um, I see Amir Khan working and I don't see Kelbrook really doing much. Um, now, it's not to say that Kelbrook's not doing anything, but at this point in, in their career, one is, one is extremely active. Khan's always been an athlete. He always had a weird looking body. I'm not sure what's up with Amir Khan, but I think that's a genetic thing. Um, but Amir Khan's always been extremely athletic. Um, he's never been, and he's training with a fighter who beat him, dismantled him, and he's working with the trainers who had a game plan to destroy Amir Khan. Um, there's nothing that Carol Brooke can do better than Errol, Errol the, I mean, the, uh, Terrence Crawford, right? There's nothing that Carol Brooke can do better than Terrence Crawford at this stage of his career. Maybe in his prime, he had a better chance of doing things like Terrence Crawford couldn't do. I do think Carol Brooke hits harder than um, Terrence Crawford. And I do think um, Amir Khan, I'm sorry, Carol Brooke has a better jab than Terrence Crawford. But besides that, you know, the, the the things that made Carabook great, it's a, a diminishing return. It's it's falling at this point. It's not as good as it used to be. Uh, Khan's fast and he's still fast, and I don't think that really slowed too much down. Um, but yeah, man, I think Carabook versus Mir Khan fight is definitely still a intriguing fight. They say it's too late. It's too late to make the fight. It should have a long time ago. Yeah, well, the reason why I didn't have a long time ago is because there is too much to lose. Both these fighters are at their prime. Both these fighters are proven. Both these fighters at one point were world champions, and that's why the fight never happened because, you know, it's all about getting that home hometown support. And if you lost to the other hometown guy, well, why root for number two when you can root for number one, right? So we're gonna see how this whole thing plays out with Amir Khan and Kerr Brookman. I'm really excited to see this fight. Like I said earlier, I'm I'm leaning toward Amir Khan just based off activity right now. And me personally, you know, outside of Khan's chin, I think he fought better opposition at welterweight which is you know the most competitive division in boxing bar none um but anyway let me know how you guys feel about it though like comment subscribe this is the empire geobossing empire peace geobossing empire